So, Murder on the Orient Express is a movie that was made because they know you ain't gonna read the book, and young people nowadays don't watch movies from the 70s because they're too old, even though this one takes place in the 30s. They got a really cool cast for it, like Ray, Catwoman, The Green Goblin, Esteban Julio Ricardo de la Rosa Ramirez, and even scored one of the most prestigious bands known for their integrity. So, the movie starts off as a joke. Like, literally, there's a rabbi, a priest, and an imam who are trying to figure out who stole the Ark of the Covenant or something, and of course Sherlock Holmes' cousin comes in and saves the day, outing out the police dude who was the one who called him in the first place. Idiot. Now, Hercule is probably the greatest detective in the world, since he says, And I'm probably the greatest detective in the world. But there's one mystery we can't figure out. His style. Because you see, this is what he looks like in the 70s, and for whatever reason, they added extensions to his mustache, leaving him looking like the final hipster boss you gotta defeat. He's not only acting worse than Johnny Depp and Tusk, the man looks like Tusk. This man acts so cartoonish that when he steps on poop, he has to put his other foot in the poop just to balance things out. In other words, you'll be questioning who was directing him to and then you realize he, uh directed the movie on his own. Once we get on the train, we see Johnny Depp get one of those letters that Jim Carrey's Riddler made to blackmail people, which obviously scares the Depp out of Johnny, and he goes to... The greatest detective in the world. He begs him to be his bodyguard, but Hercule says no, since everyone knows that Ratchet, yes, his name is Ratchet, is an art thief, a murderer, and worst of all, an American. An avalanche happens that night, the train gets derailed, and they all awaken to a murder on the Orient Express. Johnny Depp's been stabbed 12 times, so it becomes Hercule's job, which he didn't want to take, to interrogate the 12 possible suspects. And they all did it. Spoilers, you're watching an explain video. Uh, they're all the killers. You see, before he got himself some superstars and became Ratchet, he was the mobster John Cassetti who kidnapped the little girl for ransom, received the ransom, but then left her lifeless body in the woods to be found. This caused the little girl's family, the Armstrong family, to fall apart. The mother, out of grief, dies after giving premature birth to a stillborn. The father, being a war veteran, commits suicide due to his depression. And since they could never find Cassetti, the police soon blame the maid, who eventually hangs herself in jail, only to be proven innocent after her death. That leads us to the 12 on the train, and the answer to who the murderer is, which only Hercule can find considering he's the greatest detective in the world. The twist is that they're all connected to the Armstrong family, and we're all affected by their deaths, and just want justice from Cassetti, or aka Ratchet. We have Alfred over here who served with Mr. Armstrong during the war and eventually became their butler. Aaron Burr, sir, was Mr. Armstrong's right-hand man. Daisy Ridley was the family tutor. The chick from Sing Street who gets like two and a half lines with her crazy boyfriend in this movie was Mrs. Armstrong's sister. Dame Judy was her godmother. Doris Thatcher was the cook. My uncle was the valet. Penelope Cruz was their nurse. Olaf's dad was the DA who wrongly accused the maid and it ruined his career. Esteban was the maid's brother. And the foe was a cop who eventually fell in love with the maid before she died. All of this was planned by Michelle Pfeiffer's character, who was not only an acclaimed actress back in her day, but the grandma of the little girl, the mother of Mrs. Armstrong, and the one who gathered these 12 people to make up the jury that would finally bring about justice. So, like, why not kill him earlier when there's not a famous detective around? Luckily for them, the script tells Hercule to lie to the police and tell them that a lone stranger came on the train and then dipped in order for all of these people to finally have peace. He gets off the train in the middle of nowhere and coincidentally finds a messenger who pitches him the sequel to this movie by offering him up a case. Overall though, besides learning that Hercule is the greatest detective in the world, I'd say that this was a, a decent train ride to go on and overall considering that there was a murder on the Orient Express, it at least makes flying United look a little less bad. Thank you guys for checking out this video. I would say that the movie is a solid rental, and I would say that in the beginning, it has this really cool long take that's not better than Atomic Blondes, but it's still pretty cool considering they did it in 65 millimeter. But other than that, I'm curious to see what other movies you guys want me to explain and recap in minutes down in the comments. But until next time, remember, man, don't let your hammer pull you off.